Hey there, Elliot here, and today we're going to be taking a look at how you too can create amazing plastic concoctions which don't look at all like my print file. Jokes aside, if you actually look over to my top right, you can see probably in a blurry sense some 3D prints. That's right, we're going to be taking a look at a 3D printer and it's the Robo C2. The Robo C2 is the result of a successful Kickstarter campaign that raised somewhere over a million dollars and over probably like 1600 different backers. Uh, one of the main things that really make this device stand out outside of it actually successfully coming out of Kickstarter and becoming a product that's in someone's hands, which frankly just doesn't seem to happen much anymore, is that this device is just insanely simple to use. Now I don't know if you look back at my previous review where I got drunk and tried to create my own 3D printer which after about 10 different times it started to sort of work and then you know when you plug it in it shoots sparks up but that's a different story uh, this is not like that at all right out of the box it probably will take you anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes to properly set this up and familiarize yourself with exactly what it should be doing and how it works that being said once you're up and running all you have to do is either take a USB drive and drop it into there and it will immediately be able to start printing after it's preheated. Or you can do the other thing, which is what's pretty neat in my opinion. You can use its actual app to use Google Drive or Dropbox to just drop it in there and it will slice it up. So typically you have to actually go through and use something like Cura to be able to uh, slice up your file and format it specific to a printer. And you can actually do that with this. There's a few different ways you can print. Uh, but with this, it actually has software built in, a version of Cura at that, where it will just take your STL file and immediately be able to slice it up and basically print it out as you intended it to. And in the app, you can actually control some of the basics such as preheating uh, and testing out the extruder and all of the uh, different leveling. What's also pretty neat within the app is that you can actually set it to create a floor or a mat and then also different legs on it to basically add stability to your print that you're going to produce. Now, if I had that option before, instead of having to go through Cura and basically stick these different things in there, that would have been fantastic for my other 3D print, which just basically created that monstrosity that I showed you before. Now, this printer did produce that very odd looking creation, which actually had something to do with a little bit of user error, and I'll get into that in just a moment. But first, let's take a quick look at the technical specs, and then we'll dig into how well it works. As far as 3D printers go, the Robo C2 may seem like it's a little bit expensive at 650, or if you go to their site, it's actually listed at 800. But if you compare it to other 3D printers with about the same technical abilities, it's actually not too bad. Now, it's pretty obvious to say if you're going to be going for a cheaper version, you're most likely going to end up building it yourself. When you build it yourself, most of them don't include a lot of sensors. That means you're going to be a lot, doing a lot of maintenance, a lot of tinkering, and just constant fiddling to make sure that it just prints out well. If you're not looking to have regular maintenance and tweaking of a system, this was pretty much just going to handle all that for you. So there's a few different reasons for that, and let's dig into why. So first, here's just the basic technical specs. As far as the print size goes, it'll give you 5x5x6, five by five by with a layer resolution anywhere from 20 to 300 microns. The travel speed is up to 250 millimeters a second, and if you actually compare it to the printer that I put out there, uh, this actually tends to go a little bit slower, however it is more accurate even at the slower or less accurate settings. For the print head, it has a quick change nozzle, and it's also incredibly easy to access. You don't have to wrench it out like the version that I used to build. For the XYZ accuracy, it's set at 12.5 and 5 microns. The print technology is fused filament fabrication. For the most part, you're going to be using PLA. Unfortunately, it does not have a heated bed, so you're probably not going to be using ABS on this. That being said, you probably don't want to deal with the fumes for the most part anyway, so it's not a huge loss. However, the company has said that it can support up to about 15 different versions of PLA, which is anything from wood to carbon fiber. So there's still a lot to work with. Obviously, when you get the actual 3D printer, it's going to come with your standard plastic PLA. In most cases, it'll be blue. As far as the bells and whistles, 
that really just comes down to connectivity. You can not only connect it through Wi-Fi, you can set up a hotspot so you don't have to have it on an actual network. And then the connected app basically lets you control every little bit of it. And that's great because the built-in touchscreen's a little bit wonky. So as you're trying to press it, sometimes it's not super sensitive to touch, which if you're going to try putting this in a learning environment with kids that are maybe a little bit over eager to press things, uh, you might end up with a broken screen at some point. That's just an assumption on my part, but I know that's a pretty good assumption to be held. And one of the more interesting parts are that it uses Adreno for its GPU and then also Raspberry Pi. So I just want to reiterate again how easy this thing is to do. So if you compare it to the previous 3D printer that we looked at, and again, all of these kind of use different systems. Uh, a lot of them use some sort of portable memory device, so it could be anything from an SD card to a flash drive. Basically, you're gonna just be downloading, editing and slicing the files, and then sticking it onto the actual device so it can read it and then print it. For this, you can do a few different things. It does include a USB flash drive, so you can actually do that common tactic. That being said, you know if you want to go with the easy route, and I would highly advise doing it this way, is actually just using the app. So you just download the actual SDL file, uh, either drop it into Dropbox or Google Drive, and then upload it directly into the storage, which it can have about four gigabytes of internal memory on this thing. So that's about 400 different files, a 3D print that you can actually store in here. Then you just let it do its thing. As you're actually setting up the print, that's where you're going to be able to select the quality, which will of course impact the speed of the print. Now, I did notice that this does print a little bit slower than the previous one that we looked at and built, but that being said, it just looks so much more smooth. Now, the output from the different uh, materials and 3D prints that I looked at from the last version um, basically, you would have to sand it down and do a little bit of uh, roughening of some of the edges. This one, I basically just pulled off the bed, which it actually automatically will put a bed on there, which is great. Um, you just pull that off and it's you know good to go. You can sand it down and paint it if you want, but otherwise, the accuracy on here just looks fantastic. Some of the things that you're going to usually see in a 3D print are you'll see like uh, incidental grooves, uh, some waves and all that. This just looks like a solid piece of plastic, which is exactly what it should look like. So as you can tell, the actual print accuracy of this well, looks pretty great. You're not seeing a lot of grooving, which happens from overpressurized extruders jamming into the print. And you're not seeing waves either, which happens when it's just not quite level. Fortunately, there's a good reason for that, and that is due to its design. As far as a 3D printer goes, the design and the different parts play a huge and vital role into it. So the more tinkering, maintenance, and inaccurate a printer is, the less time you have printing, and the more time you have spent on failed projects. Obviously I ran into that once, and that is because of user error, which is tied to a magnetic faceplate which sits on the front cover of the extruder area. So I'm not necessarily sure what role that thing plays, to me, it just seemed like a design, so I just popped it off and I did not run into that issue again. So while the magnetic plate wasn't really much of a concern, there were two other areas that were worth pointing out. So the touch screen, as I mentioned before, it's a little bit wonky. As you're trying to press it, it's just a little bit stubby and not super sensitive. Uh, in some places, because the icons are pretty small, it's like the pixels just don't want to interact. Maybe I just also have big hands and it doesn't want to, you know, work with me on that. And then finally, of course, there is no heated bed on here, so that does limit you to printing with non-heated materials. Uh, obviously, it heats through the extruder, but the point of a heated bed is that it prevents or reduces warping, which means you can't use ABS. Now, there's tons of different things that you would use PLA and kind of different materials of PLA, like wood and carbon fiber, so that's not much of an issue. That being said, none of these are really showstoppers, so to speak, but if you are planning to use ABS, uh, obviously this is not a machine that's going to be super helpful to you. There is one area of the design which makes this just really interesting to me. So in the other machine that I used, it prints on both the X and Y axis using the extruder. So that means it will go both horizontal and diagonal to print. So what this means is that on the x-axis, 
the extruder is actually going to be brought to the exact right location and instead of being dragged all over the place on both the X and Y, you're not going to have a lot of waves created from this. So on top of that, the other kind of nifty uh, design feature here is that the bed of the printer actually just pops right off. So it's held in place by magnets, so when you're done, you can just take that off and then pull off the print. As with any startup, there tends to be a lot of bumps and hiccups and then of course bugs in the software along the way. Fortunately for Robo3D, their support actually works incredibly well. Unfortunately, I had to find out that through messing up their machine almost entirely. So because it uses open source technology, in particular Raspberry Pi, uh, it's not exactly the most fluid or easy to use in some cases. Now that's not necessarily a reflection of how easy it is to actually use the machine itself, but if you do a bonehead move like I did, well, you're going to basically screw up the entire thing. So I had the machine fully updated, but I made the mistake of leaving the USB drive into it and just shutting the machine off through the power. That's what I did with the other 3D printer, so I assumed, hey, that should just work fine. However, this uses a different system, which is obviously built on Raspberry Pi, so it just kind of wants you to use the utility and then actually shutting it down, and at that point, you should be able to shut down. Uh, so basically, somewhere along the lines of booting it back up with the USB drive in there, it wanted to boot from the USB drive, it just totally whacked out the machine, and basically I got connected to their lead engineer, who gave me his cell phone number and walked me through the entire process of fixing the thing. Now obviously, again, this being a startup, especially this coming out of Kickstarter, you can just expect there to be bumps and bugs and some things along the way that aren't exactly going to be part of a polished company. Uh, fortunately, their support just works really well, and they will walk you through it without issue. So would we recommend the Robo C2? If you're looking for a 3D printer that's both highly accurate, easy to use, and then you didn't have to build it yourself, yeah, absolutely. So for the price that's actually listed on Amazon right now, which is $650, I feel like this machine is just priced incredibly well. On their website, it's at about 800, so that seems a little bit high, especially if you compare it to some of the other devices on the market uh, and the different outputs, especially because this doesn't have a heated bed and you can't do all the different materials. That being said, between the accuracy of the print, uh, how easy it is to use, and the fact that I basically didn't keep destroying everything, and once I figured out that there was a magnetic plate on there and I stopped ruining the software, um, you know, it just works, and that's pretty much all that you could expect from a 3D printer if you're not necessarily a hobbyist. If you're a hobbyist, you're not really going to have a whole lot of issues constantly tinkering and messing with it just because, you know, you're more or less messing around with the technology so you can kind of learn the ins and outs of it. That being said, if you're rapidly prototyping, or maybe if you're in a startup yourself and you're manufacturing things, uh, maybe you even have an Etsy shop and you're just kind of building little figures and painting them. Uh, at that point, you're going to obviously want highly accurate things where you're not constantly sanding and just putting in extra hours just to make it look presentable. Now, obviously, there are a few different issues like the lack of a heated bed and the touch screen's a little bit funky to work with. But, you know, outside of that, it is a startup. We did kind of expect that there would be some bugs and bumps along the way. but. Ultimately, it's still just incredibly easy to use, especially compared to the disaster of a one that I built myself. Now, that being said, that wasn't my baseline. I've used things like MakerBot, and those also work super well. But at the price point that it currently is at, 650, you know, it just works fantastically well, and the accuracy is great. If you actually look over at the blurry mess to my uh, right shoulder there, Damn it, no. Uh, there are a couple of different wonky issues like the touch screen and the lack of the heated bread. Heated bread, yes, fuck. <laughs>